meet the East Regional Champions, the Michigan State Spartans. Trice again, Dempsey New for the two. On fire from the corner. Let's get off, let's get off. Takes the long one. Is headed to the final four. We are Michigan State. Go green. Go white. Starting tonight for the Michigan State Spartans at forward, a 6'6 senior from Gary, Indiana, number 22, Brandon Dawson. At forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 34, Gavin Schilling. At guard, a 5'10 freshman from Nassau in the Bahamas, number 11, Lou Rawls, Tum Tum Nairn Jr. Guard, a 6'5 junior from Lansing, Michigan, number 45, Denzel Valentine. And at guard, a 6' foot senior from Huber Heights, Ohio, number 20, Travis Trice. They are four-time national champions making their 16th final four appearance they are the winners of the south regional here are the duke university blue devils Exuberance over there. Duke is heading to the final four. We are Duke. Let's get this one. Starting tonight for the Duke Blue Devils. At forward, a 6'6 freshman from Houston, Texas. Number 12, Justice Winslow. At center, a 6'11 freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 15, Jalil Okafor. At guard, a 6'1 freshman from Apple Valley, Minnesota, number 5, Tyus Jones. At guard, a 6'5 sophomore from DeSoto, Texas, number 13, Matt Jones. And at guard, a 6'2 senior from Washington, D.C., number two, Quinn Cook. And introducing the head coaches for Michigan State in his 20th season for the Spartans, Tom Izzo. For Duke in his 35th season for the Blue Devils, Mike Krzyzewski. Well, those two coaches who just met, they have both won championships here in Indianapolis. In fact, Coach Cage won two titles two here. Two legendary Tip coaches, two legendary programs as Michigan State, which has won two national championships, Duke, which has won four national championships, and Michigan State led late in the season by their senior, Travis Trice. Tell you one thing, it's a little similar in Napier. Napier took a seven seed team last year with Connecticut. Can Trice do the same? Number seven seed Spartans, he's been playing unbelievable. Look at the last 13 games, 19.1 a game. He's been absolutely sensational, Dan. The most outstanding player in the East region, not afraid to take the big shot late in the game, and he has made more than his fair share. But it's not just the Travis Trice show, the supporting cast, Denzel Valentine, scoring rebounding assist Brandon Dawson a phenomenal rebounder Duke's got to keep him off the glass and Bryn Forbes a weapon shooting the three tell you one thing Forbes can shoot the three I think that Dawson's got to step up his scoring ability he's capable of scoring more than 11 points a game he's got to put points on the interior against Duke the Duke Blue Devils have only eight scholarship players and four of them are freshmen and here they are in the final four, led by one of the very best players in the country in Jaleel Okafor.
open for such a dominant player on the interior. I think the big question tonight, what does Tom Izzo to play him? If you double him up, he'll find open people and around the basket, he is so effective. He creates space for his teammates to get wide open. What a passer he is in the post. There he is operating on a baseline. Gabe drops them. I'll tell you one thing, what a supporting cast he has too, Dan. A couple of other freshmen, Tyus Jones, who's had some of his best games against the toughest competition, Justice Winslow, who's been playing about as well as anybody in the country in recent weeks, and Quinn Cook, the senior, has had such a huge impact on this young Duke team this year. I think to beat Duke, you've got to contain their perimeter players. I think you let Okafor go one-on-one -on -one in the interior. You did the game when they lost to Notre Dame, and Notre Dame made that decision. We're going to play Okafor one-on-one, -on -one, and they shut down Cook and Jones. Duke in white, Michigan State in green. Outstanding officiating crew here in Indianapolis, Pat Adams, Mike Eads, and Brian Kersey. This is fun, my friend. This is fun. This is fun. Yeah. This is the best of the best. Mike Krzyzewski has had Tom Izzo's number over the years, head-to-head. -head. Coach K, Coach Izzo, it's 9-1 in favor of Mike Krzyzewski and Duke. But in favor, I talked about a game day there at ESPN. He was the favorite in almost all those yep. games. So it's been a tough situation for Tom Izzo. Well, you talk about a Hall of Famer. Mike Krzyzewski certainly won. Tom Izzo belongs in the Hall of Fame. Mike Krzyzewski, the winningest coach in men's college basketball history. Tom Izzo will be a Hall of Famer one day. And the two coaches in the second game, Bo Ryan and John Calipari, are both nominees for the Hall of Fame. You could not have scripted much of a better Final Four than we've got coming for you here tonight. You know, we use the word greatness so often, but it really does indicate what's happening here tonight. This is greatness when you talk Coach K, Clamazzo, Bo Ryan, and John Calipari. The Spartans with the first possession of the game with the ball, the freshman Lou Rawls, Tom Tom Nairn Jr. Not a scorer, but a good passer and a very good leader. Three guard look for Michigan State. Dawson over Winslow, a little bit strong. And Winslow down with a rebound. You better be able to get back defensively. They run the court very well, Duke. And Winslow tapping his chest, saying, My bad, after he led Okafor too far. Turnovers were a big part of the game back in November, but the other way, Michigan State turned it over 13 times in that game, and Duke always so good at turning turnovers into points. They scored 24 points off the 13 turnovers. Duke won 81 to 71, but in, in fairness, that was four and a half months ago. Both of these teams are much different now than they were then. No doubt about it, Don. You and I did that game. A big play in that game was Tyus Jones. He went on a seven-point spurt. Valentine for three. That's big. If he's making threes, he can be a little streaky shooter. He's an excellent passer. That's a big plus for them if he gets his confidence and his rhythm. Michigan State strikes first. Matt Jones, a tough runner as he bumped into Schilling, the Michigan State big man, and still knocked it down. I talked about how he's the next factor. He has stepped in and he has taken advantage of the opportunity when they got rid of Suleiman off yeah. the team. And Jones becoming a starter, so Mike Krzyzewski's really got four out and one in around Okafor, and that means the other four guys, they can all knock down three. So if you double Okafor, a good shooter's open. Trice cut off on the baseline, needs some help. Cook playing him tough now. Cook's a tough defensive player. Trice the jumper, no. Offensive rebound, Dawson. Back up and in. He can do that. He can be a dominant player on the interior. Last year, he was the MVP in the Big Ten Championship. Dominated on the inside. What a matchup between Winslow and Dawson at the four spot. Both ultra-athletic and 6-6. Cook using the screen. Wide open, and he drains the jumper. What a great year he's had. He's made an adjustment moving over to the really the scoring guard slot, allowing Jones to play the point. Good start here, just over two minutes into Michigan State, up five to four. Tum Tum, not really a threat on the outside. You can play off him, and that's what Tyus Jones is doing. He's playing off him, knowing that you want to shoot it out there, will allow you to shoot the ball. Valentine now with Cook on him after a switch. He's got that size on him. He can look right over the top of him. Nairn into the corner. Valentine again. He can get hot. He's a rhythm shooter. It is a three, and it's an 8-4 lead for Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans. Trying to keep the ball away from Oakford inside. Winslow sizing up Valentine. Has a size advantage on him. 
Nice little shot fake, and he lays it in with a right hand. He has been terrific in the tournament. His stock going up and up, my friend. Winslow averaging 14 points, nine and a half rebounds per game in Duke's four tournament games. He brings him back within two. Trice is wide open. And Michigan State is knocking down threes early. Hey, the three balls reigning supreme. That's a big plus for them. Tommy saw so fired up on that sideline. Oh, he's making like Marishnikov jumping up and down, dancing. So proud of his team, a seven seed coming out of the East region, beating four good teams to get here. Schilling now playing one on one and open for on the inside. Open for's got to more, be a little bit more active in the interior. Winslow turns it over. Valentine got it. Three in a row, baby. Three in a row. Wow, Valentine putting the show. Look at the sport fans going bananas. Michigan State is four for four from three point range. Mike Shushevsky will let him play on. Not going to use a timeout this early. Hey, what about the depth perception? We hear all those rumors, <laughs> all the stories, yep. all the angles. It's tough to shoot in a big arena. Hey, if you can shoot, you can shoot. Look at right now, showing a little bumping up on open. It's playing them one on one. They decide to play one on one. They're going to double them up. And we have a foul, I believe, on Schilling to take us to a timeout. But the early story of the game, Dickie V, the Spartans knocking down three. State's been the three ball. It's been rated supreme. There's Mr. Trice from the corner. That's why he's averaging 19. And then Mr. Valentine says, I'm passing on some Valentine's. A little love right now. Look at the rotation. And he gets the touch. So effectively around the basket, great drop step moves. Hey, I'll tell you one thing that's big. That three ball, Michigan State beat nine of those, nine against Louisville. They already got four early in this game. Duke hasn't missed a shot, but they've turned it over a couple of times. And Michigan State with a three ball off to an early eight point lead. And man, has that energized the Spartans fans. And there are many of them. There are more Kentucky fans than any of the other three schools. There may be more Kentucky fans than the other three combined. <laughs> Given how rabid Kentucky fans are and our proximity from Indianapolis to Lexington, but all four schools are well represented here at Lucas Oil Stadium. Well, Big Blue Nation is the most passionate fan base you can find. Let's see right now if they try to get the ball inside to open for get him going one on one. There he is right there. We're going to get a hole. Tough to play one on one down there. He has all the moves, very strong, very physical. Matt Costello checked into the game out of the timeout. The foul was on Gavin Schilling before the timeout. Those are the two primary big guys for Michigan State. Neither will score a lot, but Tom Izzo needs to keep them out of foul trouble. In and out of the first miss from beyond the arc for Michigan State. You know, I think it's a smart decision to play him one on one. You got to contain Jones and you got to contain Cook. Valentine the rebound ahead to Trice three on two tried to lob it up for Dawson but Winslow tipped it away. Yeah really not a good play right there bad decision by Trice. Cook over Costello no Valentine down with another rebound doing the job on the glass. Well he's so versatile rebounds passes can shoot the ball he walked right there. Watch open for right now get the ball in the post Costello playing right here now he'll drop step spin to the basket. He can utilize either hand, left and right. Many say he'll be the first player in the draft. Some are now saying Carl Anthony Towns may be the first player. Grayson Allen into the game for Matt Jones. So now on the floor for Duke, four freshmen. The three who have started all year, but Winslow, Tyus Jones, and Okafor. And Allen, who came on at the end of the year, and he's got, he's a very athletic player and a very good shooter. Tell one thing, they're not normal freshmen. These kids are so talented. Okafor. Won't stay down. And guess who? Valentine with another rebound. Hey, he's playing a heck of a game early in this game, Valentine. He's been a star of stars. Got that size advantage right now on Cook. Nairn using the screen. And now back out to Valentine. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Nairn's a distributor, not going to look to score. Cook, 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 Cook is hounding Valentine. Now called for the foul. Trying to keep the ball away from Valentine. Valentine's dad played at Michigan State, was his high school coach. They won a state championship. In fact, he played high school with Forbes. Valentine to the bench and into the game for Michigan State now is Alvin Ellis the third, a 6'4 sophomore from Madison, Illinois. And Nairn will sit down as Trice returns as well. Bryn Forbes is in the game number five for Michigan State. Keep an eye on him from beyond the arc. He is 
their best outside shooter. Well, there's no doubt their big three are Valentine, Dawson, and Trice, but their role players are playing much better. Clark Ellis. Duke goes zone, and Tyus Jones comes up with a steal. He finds Cook. No foul call. Ball's loose, wow. and it belongs to the Spartans. Wow. Oh, no foul there. Looked like a lot of contact. Trice, a guy who over four years has battled numerous injuries, also illnesses that have cost him a lot of So good to see him persevere and playing so well, leading Michigan State into the Final Four. Spartans have turned it over their last three times down the floor, though. Ty Duke really playing to tenacious defense right there, making it real tough. And Winslow, I believe, yep, it'll be Justice Winslow complaining about the call as he call he is called for the reach-in foul. You know, one thing about Mike Shashevsky showed his ability to adjust the situations. He's utilized the zone a lot more this year than he's ever. There's the contact on the inside. I mean, he was a guy where the zone was a foreign word to him. Yep. And this year he's used it. I mean, I've seen him do a game where he played the entire game zone. Yep. Be Louisville using the zone. Part of that, just having eight players, part of that to... Make things a little bit easier on Okafor, who has had trouble at times this year defensively, especially on screen and rolls. Duke, by the way, playing much better defensively in the tournament than they did in the regular season, ironically. Absolutely. You look at their numbers in the tournament, you can see the intensity, a lot of communication. I mean, Michigan State got hot making threes early. Marshall Plumley has checked in for Duke. That's him down with a rebound. He gives him size, gives him a big body on the inside. And Emil Jefferson as well. So Mike Krzyzewski's already used all eight of his scholarship players. Jefferson, a lot of experience. Plumley, And he is fouled on the floor by Costello. That was a good foul because he was going up with an automatic dunk. Take a look at the defense, right? A regular season versus the tournament. I mean, look at the numbers right there. They beat Robert Morris, San Diego State, Utah, and Gonzaga. Gonzaga's a great offensive team, and Duke held the Zags to 52 points when they beat him in the Elite Eight. And that was a great, great defensive performance, because as you said, the Zags had all the parts, inside, outside players, and they could not score against them. Both teams have gone into somewhat of an offensive lull here in the last two, three minutes. Both clubs really so keyed up on a defensive end. You can see the action, the way they're moving their feet. Nice. Winslow with a chance for a three-point play. He's become a dynamite player. Dynamite, so aggressive offensively. He's got that great body, too. Watch right here. He's a left-handed player. Good fake. He's in a little triple threat position. Strong. Can finish in the lane. So a lot of guys can get here, Dan, but they can't yeah. finish. The foul was on Forbes. Three-point play for Winslow, who's got lottery pick written all over him as he brings Duke back within three. Fourteen, eleven. Duke has scored the last five. Don't want to pick up your dribble. Tries to drive. Puts the brakes on. Keeps the dribble alive. Shot clock down to seven. Valentine inside. Costello back to Forbes. And after making their first four, Michigan State has missed their last two from three-point range. Well, they did a great job there with ball movement. Allen with a shot fake, a drive, and he draws the foul as Duke is starting to penetrate that Michigan State defense. Allen's going to become a big-time scorer at Duke. Just a matter of getting experience. You watch next year. He's going to put points on the board. Take a look at Winslow right now. Look at the strength right here in the lane. He's got that strong, the great body, very physical. Converts it, makes a free throw as well. So much for Duke since then. Rashid Suleiman dismissed. Matt Jones replacing Emil Jefferson as a starter. And for Michigan State, Tom Tom Nairn becoming a starter. Brandon Dawson playing better now than he did at the beginning of the season. Travis Trice playing great now. Both of these teams are much better now than they were in November. Absolutely. Schilling now has been inserting the starting lineup for Mich Michigan State as well. Grayson Allen at the free throw line. Before the first media timeout, Michigan State made four threes and had scored 14 points. They didn't score at all between the first media timeout and the second media timeout. They went 0 for 3 with three turnovers, and Duke is now on a 7 to nothing run. They got to stop that slide right now, and they got to get a deuce inside. 
I would go to Dawson. Try to get Dawson some touches. Dawson being guarded by Jefferson. Here's a touch. One on one with Jefferson right now. Now Jones over to help. Made him pick up his dribble. Schilling gets it back to Trice. Ten to shoot. Hey, struggling to get a little good look. Yep. Duke really played fierce defense. Trice oh, into the corner. Open. Nairn for three off the side of the backboard. We mentioned he is not a good shooter, a guy who rarely looks for his own offense. He's the fifth option yep. offensively in their sets. Tyus Jones draws a foul as he takes a bump. Duke possession after possession, Dick. Their guards are penetrating and drawing yep. fouls. Yeah, they really attack it. <clears throat> Going to the rim really strong. They've really locked it up on the defensive end as well. Nairn the foul, his first. And for Duke right now, only two fouls, nine minutes. Michigan State's already committed five, so Duke figures to be into the bonus with a lot of time left in the first half. I'll tell you one thing about the Duke team, they never lose their poise. When they hit those four threes in a row, you never saw them lose their poise. Strong by Jones, a shot by Jones a little bit strong, but out of bounds, stays with Duke in a fresh 35 as Okafor and Cook are coming back into the game for the Blue Devils. Uncle Mo right now on the side of Duke, both offensively and defensively. Winslow and Plumley sit down for the Blue Devils. Tyus Jones, the freshman from Apple Valley, Minnesota, a magnificent freshman season. As you said earlier, he loves the big moment. Yep. He loves the big game. What well, against Wisconsin early in the year against North Carolina. Okafor backing down Schilling. Short and Dawson with a rebound. Okafor has just two points, just two shots so far. Trice coast to coast. He looks super right there. Get a layup. Forget about the three-point shot. Attack off the bounce. And that's what he did. He went right to the rim with the ball. He's had a super tournament. And first basket in a long stretch for Michigan State. Gives him a three-point lead. Okafor got fouled and count the basket. As Schilling looked like he grabbed his jersey from behind. They went to a little zone in that sequence. Michigan State. Up in the zone, went inside to Wokefer. He's got the great angle right there, right to the baseline. No help from the help side. Second foul on Schilling. He does a great job of post position. Tremendous yeah. post position in a low box. But here's where he really struggles. He's not a good free throw shooter, and the later in the season it's gone, the worse he's gotten. He makes that one. Okafor came into the game having made only 15 of his last 46. Wow. But he makes that one in this game. Dickie V is tied at the midway point of the first half. I'll tell you one thing, Dan. If it's late in the game and it's a close game, I'm putting him on a free throw line. I'm not letting him catch the ball and score. Mike Krzyzewski's actually taken him out in some close games because of the free throw shooting. Dawson airballs a six-footer. Little shot put there that he left short. Winslow. Followed by Okafor. And Duke has the lead. Time diaper dandy. He's a PTP, a prime time performer, the best freshman in America, Mr. Okafor. It is a 12 2 run for the Blue Devils. They have their first lead of the game. Taking away the transition game of Michigan State, making them play five on five. Look at Cook working on defense. Right there, great recovery. Dawson and Tyus Jones, I think, got a piece of that from behind. He can't get frustrated right now, Dawson. He's got to still play. And Winslow, who's a freight train in transition, draws the foul on Brandon Dawson. And that is the seventh team foul already on Michigan State. There's a look at the follow slam by Okafor. So that means free throws the rest of the way this half on all common fouls. And it'll be Winslow with the line for one and one. I'll tell you one thing, they're backcourt. Is lethal at the free throw line when you have Cook and Jones. They're better than 80% free throw shooters. They're about 89% free throw shooters between them. So far, Tyus Jones with zero points, but he's very patient. Playing with poise, getting the ball to key people. And Winslow has become a real aggressive offensive weapon. Forbes in, Nairn out. But you trade off there, you're trading off speed, you're trading off ball handling ability for a guy that can shoot the three. Winslow makes them both. The lead grows to four. 
Scores 14 6 at one time. Yeah. 14 6. And a 14 to 2 run right now for Duke. That's one of their great strengths, that spurtability. As Clark Kellogg would say, spurtability. One of those great spurts. Look at my quickest chasing tries. I mean, he is chasing him all over the place. And also keeping the ball away from Valentine, who got that hot start. Costello with a left hand, no. Dawson with a great offensive rebound and a Duke foul going against Winslow, and that'll be the second on Justice Winslow. That was a big time offensive rebound. I mean, he went up and got that. He snared it. He snatched it. And Winslow's going to have to sit down, and we'll see if Mike Shashevsky keeps him on the bench for the rest of the half because he's got two fouls, or if he puts him back in at some point. He'll play the scoreboard. He's going to attack. He's going to get on attack mode, Dawson. And he just did. And Jefferson is called for the foul. It'll be his first. When Dawson is engaged, and Tom Izzo's been on him for four years, to be more consistent, better effort, more determination, when he's really on, when he is mentally engaged, he's a nightmare for the opposition. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's engaged today. He really yeah. wants to play. He's had a little tough luck on a couple shots, but he's come to play. Costello. Tyus Jones on his back, so he posts up the guard and brings Michigan State back within two. That was a good play right there by Costello. Used his footwork really well, the drop step, and took advantage of his size differential. Will Okafor get a touch on this possession? He should get a touch on every possession, Absolutely. don't you think? Well, yeah, because he'll create opportunities yeah. for his teammates. A lot there of it space. Is. No he double team. He wants to take it one on one. Baseline jumper. Wow. It in. Wow. How about that? I mean, that's got the scouts going a little while. Said, oh, wow. Now he'll be either the number one pick or the number two pick. You got to believe. Valentine the miss. Spartans made their first four threes. They've missed their last three. Matt Jones missed three. Full club shooting the ball a little too quickly. Got to get a little more ball movement, player movement. Gonna reverse the ball a little. Trice using the screen. Too this quick. is a deep three. Too quick. He shot that from Fort Wayne, man. Not Indianapolis. You gotta be a little more patient on offense. See, that's what this leader's doing. He's getting some patience to them offensively. Okafor. They're gonna let him get his. He'll dump it down off the fingertips of Jefferson. And a timeout on the floor with Jaleel Okafor showing a nice touch on the mid-range jumper, Dick. Yeah, he really did a great job right here. Look, one-on-one, -on -one, they play off him. Nice touch. Wizard of Westwood would like that off the glass. Of Duke's 22, Winslow remains on the bench. He's got two fouls right now. Well, the one thing they've done really well, Michigan State, to stay in the game here, they've contained the perimeter players, but the inside guys have really been effective for Duke. Dawson's got just two points, one for four from the floor. He's had a couple of good opportunities from in close, but hasn't been able to finish them. And after the Spartans started so hot, as we mentioned, making their first four threes, they have missed their last four threes. And Duke, as a result, has taken the lead. Both teams with only three. Teams. Got a lot of pressure on these kids here, all looking to play for the national championship. Be able to stand tall on Monday night. Nobody in this game has played in a Final Four before. Quinn Cook's a senior at Duke, and as great as Duke has been, never won an ACC regular season title, never won an ACC tournament, and this is his first Final Four. Valentine got the switch, has Okafor on him. Now a trap, and Jones and Okafor take it away. Good defensive play right there, and a double team by Duke. I like the poise and patience of Jones. Even though he hasn't scored, he's been very patient offensively. Another touch for Okafor. Fires a pass to Matt Jones cross court and still plenty of time now for the Blue Devils. He threw a bullet right there, yeah. man. He threw a bullet. Well, the basketball in his hand is like a softball. I mean, he can fire it. Great hands and great feet for Okafor as well. Matt Jones with a shot clock winding down. Rebound down to Dawson, his fourth. Somebody's got to help Trice out offensively right now. Dawson running the floor. 
and gets it on the second opportunity. Second effort right there by Dawson. Missed the first one, but he stayed with it. He's a terrific rebounder, offensively yep. and defensively. So he's got four points, five rebounds right now. Two-point game, less than six minutes to go in the first half. Kentucky and Wisconsin still to come in the second semifinal tonight from Indy. As Forbes giving up a lot of size in the matchup with Jefferson is called for the foul. Talk about an unbelievable matchup to Goliaths, Kentucky. As you watch Dawson with the offensive rebound. Kentucky and Wisconsin. Kentucky trying to do something that hasn't been done since 76. And that's to go undefeated for the season. Okafor is going to get a breather. Plumley is back into the game and now for Duke. And it looks like Justice Winslow will be coming back in as well for the free throw shooter Jefferson. I would attack Winslow right now. If I'm the Spartans, like whoever he's guarding, I would attack him off the bounce, try to go to the rim. And maybe the reason Winslow's coming back in is because Dawson went out, and Winslow would be on Dawson if Dawson were in the game. Free throw shooting could be big in this game, and that's a plus for Duke and not a plus for Michigan State. One of two, so Winslow will have to await his opportunity to get back in. He'll come into the next whistle. Michigan State hasn't even been to the free throw line tonight. No, they haven't gotten to the line at all. Allen almost came up with a steal, but his shoulder was touching the sideline as he picked up the ball. So it'll go back over to the Spartans. And now Winslow is indeed back into the game. Allen did a great job defensively right there on Valentine. He was right in his face to allow him to beat him to the basket. Zone look for Duke. I'm going in the zone right now. Forbes can be a dangerous guy in this. Forbes capable of shooting the three. They should reverse the ball and bring it to Forbes. Valentine can make things happen from in there. He finds Clark. Clark the drive, and he lost it on the way up. And it's Duke ball. Poor possession right there by Michigan State. Had a chance to reverse it, get the ball in Forbes' hands. Clark's a little bit out of control right here. He made a big basket in their victory over Louisville. Yeah. Overtime win in the Elite Eight. Cook open in the corner. That's so, his 102nd three-pointer this season. Tell you one thing I like about him. He's not forcing shots. He's waiting for the shot to come to him. And he's such a good shooter. Duke was down eight early. They're up six right now. It's an important four minutes, I really believe, right now for Michigan State. You don't want to go down double digits at halftime after you had that early lead. Costello. Plumley with a rejection. Jones using the screen from Plumley, lays it in. It's all Duke right now. Uncle Mo on their side. They're fired up. It's even effective defensively. A little bump, a little hug. Duke Blue Devils really after that slow start. Look at the crowd. The Dukies, they love it. They love it. What a turnaround in this game from an eight point deficit dick to an eight point lead for the Blue Devils. Well, that's Cook right there. The guard combination breaks out the three there. And then his buddy, Tyce Jones, says, Watch me go to the rack. Right to the rim. Wow. <laughs> and look at the game around at both ends of the floor. The defense has picked up the intensity and they've gotten to the rim time after time. 22 6 spurt has put him totally in control. There's a foul on Grayson Allen. Just the fifth team foul on Duke, so no free throws yet for Michigan State. Tom really impressed the way Duke's playing defense as a team. Tom isn't going to be concerned right here. The team started on fire. Valentine has not scored since he made those three consecutive threes early. Nairn back into the game for Michigan State. Dawson is on the bench right now. A zone. A little zone right here. Costello. Guarded by Plumley, jump hook too strong, and Costello over the back for the foul. That'll be his second. So both Schilling and Costello, the two primary big men for Michigan State, they've each got two fouls, and now Tom Izzo is going to go to Colby Wallenman, who does not play all that much. He came to Michigan State on an academic scholarship. He's a pre-med student, and he basically will only play Dick. When the other two guys get in foul trouble, he played a fair bit against Duke in November, did yeah, pretty we well. Did. Yeah, we were wondering who he was. We didn't know who he was at yeah. the time. Came in and he played fairly good, fairly well, rather. I'll tell you one thing. This kid Plumley right here, he's a typical role player. Big, strong, sets screens, plays defense. And gets the, uh, gets the bounce on the free throw as well. 
He knows who he is. As you said, he knows what he's in there to do. He doesn't look to score very often. If he takes a shot, it's not a bad shot. He'll only try a high percentage shot. He's made a commitment to go to the military yep. after his career at Duke. Yeah, into the Army Reserves after he graduates. The lead is nine for the Blue Devils. Four minutes left in the half. Nairn with a burst of speed. Draws the foul. On Emil Jefferson to take us to the under four media timeout. Michigan State trying to regroup here in Indy. Or back into the game for Duke. I'm telling you, this is a danger time for Spartan lovers. Very dangerous. We talked about it a minute ago. I can't emphasize that enough. These next three minutes plus is big for the Spartans. And again, Tom Izzo, it's rolling the dice no matter what you do, but he's got Schilling and Costello on the bench with two fouls, electing to keep them out of the game so they don't pick up a third here late in the first half. So as a result, he's got Colby Wallenman in him, 6'7", 230, trying to guard 6'11", 270. Jaleel Okafor. And you know Duke's going to go right inside. Take advantage of that. The talent, the experience of Okafor on the post. Allen with a drive. Has it rejected. Here comes Nair. Crosses over. Misses the lay-in. Did everything but score. Did everything but finish the play. Took the ball aggressively to the goal. That was a big play right yeah. there. And we'll see if Duke goes inside. I would, I would immediately pound that ball to the interior. He's on ball screen, he'll release, go to the basket. No chance to play him in here. Allen. No, Jefferson got a hand on it, keeps it alive, and it'll be Duke's ball. I don't understand the last two possessions, the ball not going inside to Okafer. He came out to set a high ball screen, and then after that started fighting for position down on the block. But he's got such a size advantage on Wallenman. Right there, they want to pound it into him right now. Instead, it's Allen. Rejected by Dawson. And they get it back again, get another opportunity. You make that kind of play defensively, you got to come up with the loose ball. You can't give Duke three and four opportunities. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. Spinning on Wallenman. Does not get the shot, but he does draw the foul. Wallenman trying his hardest, really doing everything he can humanly possible. And the foul actually goes on Nairn. There's the block by Dawson moments ago. Boy, is he an athlete. Yeah, he really is. Great timing on a block shot. He's very long, very athletic. The two free throws coming here for Okafor. He's made his only one tonight, as we mentioned, and struggled all season long. 51% on the season, and worse than that recently. Matt Jones in for Grayson Allen, and Travis Trice returns for Tum Tum Nair. You know, Duke's 8 for 11 right now, Michigan State, 0 for 0. They haven't shot a free throw. I take that back. They're two for two. Yeah. They went to the line last throws. time down. Give me a turnover right there, Dan. Give me a turnover. <laughs> and now a turnover for Michigan State right in front of their coach, Tom Izzo. And you can see the look on his face. Where the guards keep trying to turn the corner uh -oh. and penetrate. Kick tie uh -oh. is Jones for three. Wide open. Drive, penetrate, kick it open. The 3D man. You drive, you draw, you dish the rock. Biggest lead of the game and now for Duke. Quinn Cook is called for the foul. Has Duke turned this game around? It was 14-6. Michigan State. There's the drive, the draw. You dish it out. And you got guys that can do nothing but nylon. NBN. Not a happy guy right there. Tom Izzo, not happy. Defense didn't rotate back out. And offensively, they had those 14 points less than five minutes into the game. Now there's just two and a half minutes left in the half. They've only scored eight points since. Unbelievable. Well, we watched the intensity of the two players defensively. I mean, they really locked it up after the early yeah. spurt. One and one coming for Trice. Nothing going the Spartans' way. This kid is a star. Jones is a star. When Jones and Cook are playing well, I think they're as good as any combination Agreed. on the perimeter in America. Yep. 
Cook looking for Okafor. Wallenman working as hard as he can to make it tough, and Okafor is called for the travel. Fourth turnover by Duke. Now you got to take advantage and get that offensive efficiency going. Allen for Cook. Cook's got two fouls, so Mike Krzyzewski doesn't want to risk him picking up his third here in the first half. So he'll sit down at least for the defensive possession. Valentine very quiet after being so dominant in the first few minutes of the game. Hit three big threes in a row. It hasn't scored since. Too much standing around. They're going to go more ball movement. Dawson. And he is fouled. It's going to be on Jefferson, I believe. A lot of a lot of whistles here in the last few minutes. A lot of fouls both ways. That's the third on Jefferson. And remember, Duke is not deep. Jefferson looking up at a replay here to try to see why he got called for the foul, and he still doesn't like it. He may not like it, but it's in the book as number three. Yeah. So they got to still just play. And now Plumley will take his place. Duke with only eight scholarship players, so they've got to stay out of foul trouble. Tell you one thing, the eight players a lot of people wish they had. One and one for Dawson. Just a 50% free throw shooter, but he makes the first. Such a great start by the Spartans. I mean, they had their fans. Everyone was fired up. And then all of a sudden, Duke, just with their defensive tenacity and their ability to attack the rim, created a spurt, and now they're on top. And another foul, and it's going to be on Wallenman. Trying to get the offensive rebound, and it's double bonus for Duke, so two free throws coming. I'll have to wait and see. Was it Grayson Allen, I think, who was fouled? i have to wait and see who's going to be going to the line. And it is Allen. I saw Allen play in high school, and I went to see Okafor in a game. He was playing against him, and he was terrific. And just a matter of time before this guy becomes a star at Duke. And he wasn't playing a whole lot after Rashid Suleiman was dismissed from the program in the middle of uh, January, I believe it was. Allen started playing more, and he erupted for a seven point game against Wake Forest late in the season. Went 9 of 11 from the floor, and he's been a factor off the bench for Duke ever since. He has that kind of ability. He's a really good scorer, driver, slash, to make the three. Largest lead of the game for the Blue Devils. There's been a 20-point turnaround in this game. Duke's gone from down eight to up 12. Allen doing a good job defending on Valentine. Dawson from the elbow. Can't get a break. He cannot get a break. That baby was in. Yep. It was in and spun right out. Matt Jones cut off by Forbes. Tyus Jones baseline jumper. No. And the rebound to Valentine. Okafor doesn't get a touch. And now a reach in foul going against the Blue Devils. On Plumley, I believe it'll be his first and back to the free throw line in Michigan State. Valentine slow to get up and in some pain. Oh, right there, rolled the left ankle just on the last step after the foul. Right there. Oh, boy. Wow. He rolled that ankle, there's no doubt. He is hobbling. But this is the final four, and he doesn't want to come out. He's in some pain, but he'll go to the free throw line. Who cut him off, and once they did that, Tom Izzo in his club really has a tough time scoring. It's his first point after that unbelievable yep. spurt he had. He's got 10 to lead Michigan State. Okafor's got 10 to lead Duke. Hit three threes in a row in the first couple of minutes. Makes them both. And now he'll come out. And they'll work on him at halftime. It's the kind of thing that can start feeling worse before it feels better. So we'll have to wait and see what Denzel Valentine's effectiveness will be like the rest of the way. But again, 
given the magnitude of the game, you got to believe he's going to be out there when the second half starts. Well, the Spartans are going to try to get this down to single digits. I think he's going out locker room. Matt Jones leans in, and we another whistle. Boy, it has been a foul fest here in the last few minutes. Tell you one thing, though, Duke's creating those foul opportunities with their driving yep. ability, attacking, attacking, attacking off the mounts. I tell you one thing, he's not inviting them to dinner. I <laughs> guarantee you that. He's not saying we're going to St. Elmo's for a nice steak. We're not going there tonight. <laughs> a great competitor, a basketball coach with a football mentality in many ways. His best friends in the house here yep. grew up with Steve Mariucci, former NFL star coach with the 49ers. And look who's back. Never mind the start of the second half. Denzel Valentine's back in now because Michigan State's going to get the ball back, and Tom Izzo wants him in there on offense. And because they're really in trouble right now. Down 10 with everything going away at Duke. Tam Mike Shashevsky has got to really feel proud of the defensive effort here in the first half by his kids. As you said, Dan, after those 14 points early in the first five minutes, it's been a nightmare for Michigan State. A nightmare. Well, psychologically, Michigan State can go into the locker room trailing by single digits. If they can get a basket and then a stop, they'll feel a little bit better about things. You know, you combine this de defensive effort with the job they did against Gonzaga. Yeah. Holding Gonzaga at 52 points was unreal in the leading offensive machines in the country. Duke goes zone again. Taking away looks for Trice. Trice can't get open. Wallenman the kick. Nice fake. Nice fake. Trice for three. Short. Rebound Valentine. They can hold for the last shot if they want. Dawson will put it up, and he just can't buy one tonight. As Allen oh, tries to say, the great hustle right in front of us. Wow, he took him a hustle. Yeah, almost taking out a microphone and a monitor. I know one thing. Mike Krzyzewski loves that kind of intensity. He'll get more playing time, man. More PT yeah. plays like that. Diving on the floor, hustling, scrapping. I know another thing. You weren't interested in taking a charge on that play. No, no, no. not at all. <laughs> Michigan State ball. Shot clock turned off. Dawson had a nightmarish first half shooting the ball. He's tried so hard, the ball just has not fallen for him. A block by Okafor. Oh. Ball still loose. And the first half will come to a close with Duke turning an eight point deficit into an 11 point lead. Put a clinic on him defensively. That's how they got that lead. What a terrific defensive job. A big run for Duke after trailing early. Tracy Wolfson is with Mike Krzyzewski. Just defensively, how about the intensity from your team in this first yeah, half? We got knocked back at four straight threes, and our defense has been great the last 16 minutes. And we started, instead of putting floaters up, we started driving. And, you know, once we started driving, they fouled. And they kept shooting jump shots, and then... They were lucky they missed some, so, uh, but we played a lot better those last 16 minutes. Thanks a lot, right. Jim. That's right, you can hear Coach K is hoarse, and it's <laughs> just halftime. Duke with a 36-25 to 25 lead over Michigan State at halftime here in semifinal number one from the Final Four in Indianapolis. They started hot. Valentine was knocking down threes from all over the place, but then Duke took over, and the Blue Devils are up 11 at the break. Levitt. All eight Duke players who played scored at least one point in the first half. Well, I thought their really great asset was their defense, their team defense, the way they communicated with one another, the way they really they blocked out. They did everything you'd want a team to do defensively, and that's been a carryover through the entire tournament. They have played better team defense in the tournament than they did all year long. Yeah, through the regular season, they were known as one of the country's great offensive teams, but not a very good defensive team, but that has changed in the last couple of weeks. Mike Krzyzewski has loved this team from the moment the season began, and especially once they got down to the eight. Shemi Ojale transferred out. He wasn't playing very much. He transferred to get more playing time somewhere else. The dismissal of Rashid Suleiman midway through the season for uh, off the court incidents and what Mike Krzyzewski says was a failure to live up to the standards of being a Duke student athlete. But once they got down to this eight, 
Mike Krzyzewski, every time we saw him, every time we did a Duke I game, yep. he said, I love these kids. They're giving me everything they had. They've had a spectacular year. And not all coaches say that about their teams, but that's the way he's felt about this group. Tell you one thing, Dan, when they got in the final four, four, I got a text message from Mike. He said, Dick, I love these kids. Exactly. He really feels that about them. You can see that intensity on him. He's all about the moment. He's not about 12 Final Fours. He's all about right now getting to the championship game. And for Michigan State, we've said so often over the years, you and I have done games, where the first four minutes to a team that's struggling is vital. I couldn't say that any more than right now. Michigan State, for momentum, has to take charge in these four minutes, or it could be Duke winning easily. Duke's ball to start the second half. Winslow had a good first half despite playing only 12 minutes, had some foul trouble, but still was very productive. They got Dawson right now playing Okafer. Driving on Schilling, he switches hands and lays it in. He can really drive the basketball. He spots a little seam, he attacks, he can use either hand around the rim. Valentine from the corner. Misses the three. Kept alive, and we have a foul going against Duke. See, the danger for Michigan State right now is the fact that you just can't come up and start firing threes all over, trying to get back in the game. you got to make sure you get good shots, quality shots. Dick, that's on Quinn Cook, and it's his third, so that's something to keep an eye on. He's a vital part of their backcourt. A little stagnant right now on offense. I thought he did a heck of a job on Trice Cook. He's their best perimeter defender. Valentine dumps it down for Dawson, taken away by Matt Jones. Look ahead. For Cook. Not a way you wanted to start this second half for Thomas Owen and the Spartans. Not a way you wanted to start. The Duke fans are loving it, loving it. And the lead grows to 15, the largest it's been tonight. Dawson called for the offensive foul, lowered the shoulder on Tyus Jones. What a tough start right here at the half for Michigan State. We've talked about how they had to have the great start here as the contact. No doubt about and it. He, he did more than he needed to do. He didn't need to do that much. He got such a size advantage, and he turned it over the last time down. And you said it before, Duke, how many times have you seen them late in the first half or early in the second half just put a team away? Put them away. They have that killer's mentality. They've had that over the years. Comes from the coach, don't you think? Absolutely. <laughs> 12 final yeah. force. Look at what they're driving the basketball. Wow. Anything the they want right now. I'm telling you, it has really been a nightmare for Tom Izzo out of that locker room. Foul on Tyus Jones. So Duke has scored the only six points here in the second half. Watch you drive right to the goal. See the opening, the gap. Defense rotates over too slow. Lays it up on the glass. Duke is really attacking off the bounce. Valentine this is the corner three and we have another foul and again a foul against Duke that's about the only thing going wrong for them so far here in the second half see right now Michigan State looking for that three ball and not falling yeah. at all how do you explain a team making their first four threes and missing their next seven threes that's what's happened to Michigan State tonight it was a tease it was a yeah. tease They have very little inside offense, especially when Dawson can't find the range from in close. Jump shot from the baseline for Trice. 36-13. They've been on the spurt. 36-13. It has been a long time since the Duke Blue Devils have blown a halftime double-digit lead, and they've extended that lead here early in the second half. Okafor knows, surrounded by defenders. Trice with a crossover. Follow no. And it's Duke ball. Cutting a little too fancy on that layup. Nobody back. Slam jam bam. Mr. Okafor with the little explanation point. That touch of the floor. Look at Cook. He's all fired up defensively. Tom Izzo's not going to take a timeout. 
but he is going to make some changes as Costello and Forbes check into the game. Damn, Duke really playing terrific basketball, yep. both offensively and defensively. Look at the emphatic jam by Mr. Okafer. I mean, that is with emphasis. The assist to his buddy Tyus Jones, one's from Chicago, one's from Minnesota, but they committed together. Had played, nice feed, and a lay-in for Costello, the assist to Trice. Jones and Okafor had played together in some USA basketball camps. They like playing together so much, they decided to go to the same college. Let me tell you this. This game might have been won by Duke over Michigan State on November 15th of 2013. That's the day he made the phone call. Okafor and Jake Jones. Mr. Jones yep. made the phone call to Tom Izzo and said, we've decided we're going to go to Duke. And he called Duke because they were right there. They were right there, Michigan State, in the hunt. Okafor, no side rebound. Winslow blocked by Costello. Tell you one thing, there'll be no quitting these kids. Yep. Tom Izzo will not have his kids anyway. The no. slam by Dawson on the alley-oop feed from Trice. And it brings a little life to the Michigan State people. They're down 13. They need a little life right now. Maybe that'll give him a little lift. Cook the drive and lays it in. I cannot remember seeing so many drives against Michigan State for layups. Driving to the goal, getting layups. And now a turnover. Got Three numbers. on two. Got numbers. Great feed. Got Winslow from Cook. That's unselfish team basketball. Give the ball up to the open guy. Play as a team. Play unified. Keep it together. The C for effort. A for attitude. Him for mental toughness. That's a team, Dan Schulman. That's a team. It's like you and I are a team. And that team is up 17. They've already scored 12 points here in the second half. Look at the way they're digging in defensively. They're digging in like they're down 12. Valentine, long jumper. Winslow with a rebound in traffic. Saves it. Valentine can't fight after knocking down his first three. And Jones will wait for Winslow to get back into the play. He's so cerebral. Jones just knows how to play. I personally think he'd be better off coming back to school than headed to the NBA. I don't think there's any doubt that Winslow and Okafor are heading to the big league. As talented a trio of freshmen as there are in the country. Okafor fouled by Costello to take us to our first media timeout of the second half. Talk about defense leading to offense. There it is. Kick it out. And he gets himself a little layup, Mr. Cook, because of the defense. And then we're going to watch right here. There's the catch, the defense, the conversion. Great transition. And then Mr. Okafer with the catch and the slam. Jam, bam. And Tom Izzo is not a very happy man. Rematch of a Final Four semi from a year ago when Kentucky beat Wisconsin by one point. Bo Ryan's done an outstanding job. Badgers in consecutive Final Fours. Mike Krzyzewski his 12th Final Four. And Tom Izzo his seventh. The four coaches, Dick, have combined to go to 27 Final Fours. Wow. That's great. It's all going to be Hall of Famers. Yep. There's no doubt about it. Mike Krzyzewski's now the next... Of the three will be Hall of Famers. Look at the way they're attacking off the bounce. Every possession. Yeah. Time and time again, this time it's Grayson Allen drawing the foul. If this lead holds up, the world of television is going to be excited because they are really, in a way, they wouldn't admit it, but they're hoping to have a Kentucky Duke final. Two of the Goliaths, two programs are so polarized. Allen follows up his own miss and slams it. Embarrassment right now. How does that happen? It's been an embarrassment right now. Michigan State players. Look at Mike Krzyzewski. So excited. Tom Izzo with his arms crossed. Came here believing his kids were going to absolutely challenge him. Watch this. He misses the jumper. No one blocks him out. He goes right along the baseline. Catches it. And bam. Wow. Big time. He's going to be special, yeah, Dan. He is. He's going to be special. The lead is 19. Boy, that 14 to 6 Michigan State lead seems like a long time ago right now. What a tease that was for the Spartan fans. Ellison to Costello. Cutting his trice. He finds Clark, and Clark is fouled. Very difficult for them to get open looks. Really, got open looks early, but they're challenged on almost every possession. 
And you can see not that they're bickering but I mean there's a lot of discussion back and forth in these impromptu Michigan State huddles and Travis Trice just had to calm everybody down. There's a lot of frustration for the guys in green right now. That's the key word. They're frustrated. They came here with the desire to beat Duke. They wanted to prove they could beat the Giants. And here it is. Mike Shish I mean when you talk about certainly Tom Izzo he has said we are trying to catch Duke. Yep. It's just constant chatter. And even though not a lot of people expected them to be here in a seven seed and making it to the final four is a remarkable accomplishment. That's all well and good until you start playing this game. And then you don't want to settle for anything. You don't want to rest on your accomplishments. You want to win this game. Absolutely. And move on. Nice two man game. Costello from Trice. That's time is no basketball. Time is no such a terrific coach. I have said constantly how he belongs in the Hall of Fame and I'm hoping he's in absolutely dominated next year 2016 seven final fours I believe he won the national championship in Indianapolis yes. in 2000 yes he did at, at the old bill at the old uh, football facility the RCA and there's another drive and a layup for Cook as a steal and a layup and he draws the foul and will head to the line I'll tell you one thing it's been humiliating right now for Michigan State fans I mean Duke's doing anything they desire to do look at the drive to the basket how many layups have we seen I have not ever remembered a Michigan State team being attacked to at the basket the way they're getting attacked here tonight well points in the paint are 28 14 in favor of Duke well Duke if you look at the numbers I worked with Shane Battier today and Shane was saying that Duke could put 40 45 points in them paint on a regular basis with their driving ability Duke has found a way to win games all season long they won at Wisconsin they won at Virginia they won at Louisville they avenged a defeat at Notre Dame and beat them handily at home before losing to Notre Dame in the ACC tournament but Duke has had a very tough schedule and they come into this game with a record of 33 and 4 most of that with just eight scholarship players They've, they've had, had a great year. They had that one little bad spurt when they yeah. lost two in a row, including getting routed by Miami. Okafor with a steal. Big fella trying to do it himself, and he's fouled by Costello. He never saw his teammate, but he should have dropped the ball on a dime right to Cook for a layup. He might have even gotten it back. Lost in the ACC semifinal to Notre Dame, but a great year, and, and I think. That's the fourth foul on Costello. Like you mentioned, the two losses they had back to back in January to North Carolina State to Miami. And a lot of people are saying, boy, what's wrong with Duke? You lose two in a row. When you're as good as Duke is, you lose two in a row. It's what's wrong with Duke. And it becomes a big story. Yeah. Just like in the next game, you got Kentucky, Wisconsin. If Wisconsin goes out and winning, a very capable of winning that game, I can hear people already screaming and yelling, what a disappointing year. 38 1. Yeah. <laughs> disappointing year. Are you kidding me? For most coaches, they build statues for you at 38 1. Costello. The junior sits down with four fouls. Okafor missed them both, and then he went into the lane too early because he knew he missed it and he was trying to get in there in a hurry. So the violation gives the ball to Michigan State. It would be interesting to see what happens to Duke if they play somebody really tight in the last three minutes and Okafor's on the floor. Do you foul him with intent like the Shaq deal with Shaquille? Yeah. I know I would. Yeah. I would. Well, Mike Krzyzewski at times in close games has taken Okafor out because of the free throw shooting. Well, you problems. and I did a game. The Notre Dame game. Yeah. Trice wide open. It's a three for Trice. Their first make from beyond the arc since they made the first four of the night. What a tournament he's had. I mean, no matter what goes down in this game, Michigan State can be proud of their effort as a seven seed to beat some quality teams, starting with Georgia was a good team, and then to beat an outstanding Virginia team. Cook misses the layup. Loose ball to Ellis. Look ahead to Trice. Two more for the senior. What a tournament this kid has had. You pick any all tournament team, his name better be on that list. He's got a dozen. Michigan State quickly cuts five points off the deficit, but they're still down 15. Got a switch out here. Got Dawson right now. They rotate back. Jefferson, the handoff to Cook. Shot clock at two. He forces it up. And that's a shot clock violation on Duke. Didn't hit the rim. Good defensive effort right there. Good defensive effort. 
Tries doing all he can to say, come on, Spartans, help me out. I'm going to knock down the three right now, and now I'm going to show you my versatility. I'm going to go right to the basket for a layup. He goes right by Tyus Jones, the diaper dandy, and lays it on the glass. The moment you and I saw him in the first game against the Spartans, he was 8 for 10 in that game. Yep. At 17 points in that game, a 10-point win over Duke, trying to beat Michigan State again with the stakes much higher here in April. Trice to a cutting Valentine. Tough shot. And Michigan State now with a 7-0 run to get it down to 13. Well, you know, you like to get maybe to the eight-minute mark. We can get into the single digits and then create a little bit of an excitement here for your fans as well. He loves to drive. There's and a kick ball is the call. I don't think it's a foul. I think it's a kick ball, but maybe I'm wrong. No, no, no it is a foul. foul. He yeah. a foul. Made a, a referee, the official Pat Adams, made a kicking motion with his leg. And I guess saying that Dawson extended his leg to create the foul. But boy, Winslow just drove into the leg of Dawson. Is that his third foul? Is that Dawson's third? It is Dawson's third and also a bench warning on Michigan State for protesting the call a little bit too vehemently but boy he did not look at all like Dawson committed a foul on that play. See I wouldn't make a reprimand and allow a coach to complain. He had a legitimate grief right a beef right there about that. Now Dawson's got to be careful can't pick up his fourth. Look at the way they try going to the basket. Boy and Trice is furious now. I thought he got all ball there. Yeah we'll get a look at a replay. I thought he got all ball there. As soon as the hand went in, the whistle was blown. Who did they call it on? Trice, I believe. And it was actually Dawson who knocked the ball away before Trice even got there. These guys are unbelievable on the free throw line. 89%. Look at that. Automatic. It is such a plus when you got guards that can make free throws like Jones and Cook. It was Dawson called for the foul on that last one, Dick, and that is his fourth. What a what a swing here in the last 20 seconds with yep. two questionable foul calls on Michigan State. One of them that sends Dawson to the bench. Tell you one thing, Tom is going to have a decision to make. You can't let this game get up to the 20s yep. again. Behind the back, Valentine slicing through. Clark misses the 12 footer. Valentine tips it back out, but it finds Tyus Jones. Okafor follows it up, finishes, and is foul. He is so strong around the basket, so physical. Oh, he's got a smile on his face, and he should. If I had that ability, I'd have a smile on my face. I mean, are you kidding me? You think his bank account's going to go ding a ling ding? It's going to go up like yours going up. 14 points for Okafor. How often do you see a big guy get rewarded when he runs the floor? Good effort there by Okafor. That is the problem he has, making free throws. Two for five tonight. That's 40 percent in any language. And Tyus Jones called for the foul. Tell what's impressing me about Duke. They play like they're down 15 yeah. instead of up 15. And that's a positive. You see so many teams are up 17 actually. You see so many teams out there. You get a lead. They get a little relaxed. Trice shaking up. And a turnover. Winslow is fouled. Okay, one thing. They take that turnover and they get in transition so quickly. They really get up and down that floor. And Trice still laboring, and he's going to come out of the game. It looks like Bryn Forbes is getting ready to check in. Tell you one thing, the Duke players have made a commitment in this tournament to play as a team on the defensive end. As a look at Trice, who's had a magnificent, a magnificent tournament. He's basically carried this club really to the point where they're in the Final Four for the seventh time for this coach here, Tom Izzo. And now 
And somebody from the Michigan State training or medical staff is going to come out and have a look at trying Sousa senior as we mentioned he's battled numerous injuries and an illness a couple of years ago he was hospitalized for a while lost a lot of weight. He's a terrific kid too. Yeah. I've had a chance to share some time with him as a really fine young man more than just a basketball player. He will not just be defined by being a basketball player. He's a total person. So many guys allow basketball to define them. You got Dawson on the side in foul trouble. You got Trice going out, and you're down right now big yeah. in a game here where you're down major number 17. They're on the free throw line. Could spread it. I would simply say you are in big, big trouble. Trice going past the bench and right back towards the Michigan State locker room, it looks like. What a combination today. Okafor and Winslow have been dominant. Have been dominant. They've combined for 27 points between them. We near the midway point of the second half and the Duke Blue Devils 10 minutes away from advancing to the national championship game. Forbes a miss. Matt there Jones. Goes there goes Jam City. Oh, good defensive play there. Put him on a foul line. Schilling fouls Winslow to prevent the dunk. Winslow really gets out in transition. Really goes to the rim. It's the fourth on Schilling. So here comes Wallenman again because Costello and Schilling both have four and minute by minute whistle by whistle things are going from bad to worse for Tom Izzo. You know Dan what's really impressive when you look at the Duke stats the fact that they've held their four opponents to get to the final four under 60. They've yeah. held four opponents under 60. Look at this foul trouble Costello Dawson and Schilling all with four. Things will not get any easier for opponents at Duke next year. They got some great recruits coming in. Back into the zone, which Mike Krzyzewski's done from time to time tonight. Nairn into Wallenman, and he'll lay it in. You know, Wallenman finds an open seam right there. Didn't expect to get some playing time in this game, yep. but he's getting him some. They got a kid coming in next year. Jeter's going to be outstanding from out of Las Vegas. And he came out here with Kennard. Remember that name. He's like automatic, they say, shooting the trifecta. Cook to Winslow. Back to Cook. Still plenty of time. Jones inside. Knocked away. Okafor's got it. Look at those hands. <laughs> Look at those hands. Man, to see had a bunch of points. Wow. You know, Wallenman doing the best job that he can right now defensively on Okafor. Kept him out of the lane, and the shot clock's down to three. I tell you, some of the things we're seeing out of Okafor shows me why, if I'm making the pick, he's the first pick I would want. Timeout on the floor. Okafor and the Blue Devils seemingly in control. Trice on the sideline as well, and it just was all Duke. Big time foul trouble for Michigan State, and big time scoreboard trouble as well. They're down 18. Cook misses. That's a shot clock violation. They had to get a shot up quickly. There were just three seconds on the shot clock when they inbounded. So to go back over the over to the Spartans, and Trice is back. Now they're going to need a. Superhuman effort from their best players, Trice, Valentine, and Dawson, who's back into the game here in the last 8:45. If they're going to have any kind of a chance. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Duke. We've seen it so often. When it gets to about the four-minute mark, they go to that spread to offense, and they do a great job making sure they get high percentage shots. Nairn to Valentine, got it. 
61-45. Full court pressure. They're going to try and create some turnovers, but that's very difficult to do when you look at the backcourt that this team possesses. And Michigan State's already committed 10 fouls here in the second half, so any common foul results in two free throws for Duke. And you got to remember this. The guards for Duke are outstanding free throw shooters. Winslow muscles it up and in. What a tournament that guy has had. Mr. Winslow, his stock keeps going up and up. Justice Winslow. I love that name, too. <laughs> I love it. A game high 16 now for Winslow. Valentine baseline keeps the dribble alive. Will push off on Winslow, and then he knocks down a three. Valentine heating up. They got to heat it up on the defensive end. They need stops. This backcourt playing so well. Playing with poise. Jones, a chance for a three-point play. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. I've done a lot of Michigan State games over the years. I cannot remember where a team's been able to get to the basket time after time with driving layups. Take a look at Winslow right here. Number 12. This guy's got stardom all over him. There he is, the strong drive to the goal. He's a mini version, and I say mini, of James Harden. A mini version. The strength, the body, and there's Tyler. For this one will advance to the national championship game Monday night against the winner of our second semifinal. And what a matchup that should be between Wisconsin and Kentucky. Kentucky undefeated on the year, 38 and 0. No team has gone wire to wire and won a national championship without losing a game since Indiana did it 39 years ago back in 1976 and the Wisconsin Badgers by the way are no slouches the one seed in the West 35 and 3 on the season with probably the front runner for national player of the year in Frank Kaminsky. Well, I'll tell you one thing they beat a quality team in Arizona a very good defensive yep. team. They went 10 for 12 shooting the three in the second half and the kid Decker we know about Kaminsky you talk about a player who's rising in terms of his stock. Decker has yep. been terrific. He scored 50 points in the last two Wisconsin games in this tournament. Well he and Kaminsky had 56 between them against yep. Arizona. Wallenman still in the game for Michigan State. Left it short. Seven minutes separating Duke from the national championship game. The last time they played in it, they won it, 2010, and it was in this building against Butler five years ago. Our people coming over here today saying, you know, you Dukies, man, they haven't won it. Championship five years. It's unreal. <laughs> a lot of teams have won a championship in a hundred years. Wallenman comes up with a steal. Valentine. A big three. And it's a 14-point game. Tell you one thing, the Spartan kids are not quitting. They are battling and battling and battling. Valentine's got 21. Trice has 12. Valentine with the last eight Spartans points. The problem is he went through that cold spurt there yeah. after the early start. And Dawson has not had his typical game. Has not been able to finish around the rim like he normally can. Came out, really played hard. Just was unable to get any kind of break around the basket. Okafor. And another Duke turnover. Trice to Wallenman. He might have had himself a layup, but instead got caught in the air and turned it over. Overpassing that and had a layup. Cook no. Okafor the rebound. Those big hands, that big body keeps he the ball alive. Just tapped it to himself. Gives them another second opportunity. That was a layup you got to make down there. But the numbers are in transition. You got to score. Jones. Okafor. That's beautiful basketball. Poetry. It's like poetry emotion. Unreal. Two diaper dandies. They decided to come to school together on November 15, 2013. And Duke now with 36 points in the paint in this game. Dawson is fouled. Every time they make a little run, Michigan State, here comes that great ball. Look at the unselfishness. They spread the court. Good spacing. And a great pass by Jones to Okafor. He has terrific hands. Really great hands, great footwork. Okafor, 7 for 11, 16 points. Jones with 9 points and 4 assists. 
one thing about Okafor, he knows his strengths, he knows his weaknesses. You don't see him stepping out, trying to do things that really is not part of his repertoire. He scores where he's supposed to score, around the basket. He's one of a rare breed, a true low post player. And every mock draft you look at has Okafor as either the first or the second pick into the NBA draft with Carl Anthony Towns, who we'll see in the second game for Kentucky, the other guy that everybody thinks is going to go one or two. Will there be a battle between Okafor and Towns, or does Wisconsin have a little say in that matter? Into the hands of Jones. He's so heady with the yeah. ball. Really has patience about him. So many young kids trying to do things so quickly. He has that poise. These two guys play so well together. Shot clock winding down, forces up a three, and it's out of bounds to the Spartans. But that was a good possession. You're up 15, you use the shot clock, you take time off the clock. That's managing the clock. Subs for both teams. Allen and Plumley back into the game for Duke. Costello returns for Michigan State. Remember, for some players, Trice and Dawson in particular, they're seniors, and as much because you focus on the team that wins and goes on. But careers come to an end in games like this. And what careers they've had. They've been yep. two quality players in the very tough Big Ten Conference. Dawson. Fade away from the baseline short. Rebound Matt Jones. They're just going to manage the clock now. Not play a delay game. But they're going to take time off the clock. Get good spacing. There it is. That's their delay game. High Post extended, win people. Get a lot of motion. They want you to foul the guards. They want you to foul the guards because they're lethal at the free throw line. Matt Jones, the drive, no, and the rebound of Allentine. Michigan State trying to get out in transition, and Dawson will lay it in and draw the foul. I watch Dawson, I see a kid with so much potential. I mean, he's such an athlete. There he is, he finally gets a little break in transition. The ball goes down. Down 13, certainly not over today's day and age. But here it is. There's Tum Tum with the pass, and there's the Dawson with the layup. Players. Appling, yeah. Appling, yeah. yeah. Had the injury to Appling really hurt them yeah. as well. This was a team back in January this year. Some people even thought they were in jeopardy of missing the tournament. They were not playing well at all. But the insertion of Tum Tum Nairn into the lineup, uh, other players getting healthier, playing better in Michigan State, finished strong, took Wisconsin to overtime in the Big Ten tournament championship game. Should have won that game. Yeah. They gave that game away at the end. Yeah. In fact, that's, I believe, in the last about 10 or 11 games. And you beat Georgia, Virginia, Oklahoma, and Louisville in the NCAA tournament. There are no softies there, no cheapies at all. No, no cupcakes. That first yeah. game was a tough one, Georgia. Yeah. Timeout taken by Mike Krzyzewski as Duke was scrambling a little bit. Why don't we look ahead to the second game? Give us your thoughts on Kentucky and Wisconsin. Well, I think you know, there aren't many teams that can match up with Kentucky size-wise on the front court. You can when you talk about Decker, Kaminsky, and certainly Hayes. Hayes is a guy in X Factor. He's an outstanding athlete. You look right here in comparison with the teams. You look at points per game. You look at Kentucky. They're like the best at that field goal percentage, 35%. And then the turnover ratio. The one thing when you look at Wisconsin, I think the key to the game is their guard play. If their guards, Gosser and Koenig and Jackson, get them to be efficient and get a rhythm more offensively, I think you're going to have a barn burner, a mailbox masher. They got to get quality shots for Kaminsky and Decker. I'm not convinced that Towns, when reports I'm getting, is he's going to guard Kaminsky early. And I think Kaminsky will run him off screens and get open for threes. I think Willie Cauley Stein would be the guy I, agree. I would put I agree. on him yeah. and Kaminsky. Meanwhile, Mike Krzyzewski has taken Okafor out of the game because of the free throw trouble, even though he made the last two. So he's got. Uh, a smaller lineup in there. He'll go to Jefferson now, or he might. He's thinking about going to Jefferson. So he's got Grayson Allen in the game, another ball handler, and a better free throw shooter than Okafor is. And this is a very tough way to try to come back on a team like Duke because if the right guys are shooting the free throws for Duke, they're it's almost automatic. automatic. Yep, it's automatic. The two guards are 89% shooters. Yeah. Jones and Cook. 
What a start it was, though, for Michigan State. I mean, that was the ultimate tease. They came out on fire, knocked down their first four threes. It looked like they were really ready for having, if, you know, not that, but it was going to be a quality game. And it has not been. It's been all due. Trice for three. Missed it badly. It's out of bounds to the Blue Devils. Michigan State players acting as if they thought that ball was going to belong to them, but it'll be Dukes. Tom Izzo's asking the same question. And now Tom Izzo's playing offense defense, making three substitutions every time there's a chance. They want to foul him. Or him. Or him. <laughs> <laughs> They're smart enough to put the ball in the hands of Cook and Jones. Of the guys on the floor right now, Winslow is the worst free throw shooter. He's at 63. At this point, Look at the shouldn't spacing. foul at all. Look at his spacing. Yeah. Great spacing. Good cut by Allen. Nobody saw him cutting on the baseline. Layup, layup, layup. Here's a kid getting minutes in a big-time game. And as he responded, Allen. And a terrific feed from Cook. Cook has been such a leader. He's accepted the diaper dandy coming along. Tyus Jones moved over. Every really a combo guard. Easy layup. I have never, ever seen so many layups against Michigan State. Well, it looks like Duke's doing their part to get to the championship game. Will Kentucky do their part against Wisconsin? Many people think that's the championship game, Kentucky-Wisconsin. But I'm not so sure. This team from Duke yeah. is legit. Duke's best is really, really good. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I mean, oh. it's, it's hard to look at a team that's on its way to going to 34-4. and four As later. Matt Jones gets out behind the defense and lays it in. All Blue Devils after the first five minutes of the game tonight. They're almost as good as you, my man. Yeah. Oh, Mike Krzyzewski is livid with Grayson Allen for committing a foul and stopping the clock. He may be up 16 with barely two minutes to go, but he's not happy right now. He coaches every possession. Every possession. So does Tom is out. That's why they're great. Yeah. And boy, do these two coaches have a lot of mutual respect for one another. Absolutely. Admiration. Yeah. You know, they're more than coaches. They're very vital in their communities. They're all about being humanitarian kind of people, helping people. I know Tom's been a great help with me with the V Foundation. Mike Krzyzewski, terrific help. He's on the board of directors. Clark will foul Winslow. So Michigan State going to keep trying to foul people. I mean, 15-point deficit, 215 to go. The odds are When you play the final four in a football stadium, the court is raised off the floor. It, it improves the sight lines for fans. So you can see the, the benches where the players are. They're actually below court level. And they've got to hop up the stairs to get in the game. But for the coaches to have a good vantage point, Tom Izzo and Mike Krzyzewski have stools up on the court for them to sit on and watch the game. Same thing applies to the game in baseball. You know, in the dugouts, you don't get a good view there at all. Good view at all. You know, I said today, and I really believe this in my heart, and I respect those that disagree with me, I think Mike Krzyzewski is the best coach on the sideline today in any sport. Any sport. I mean, I know we could talk Belichick and Sabins and all those people. My one two, based on what they've achieved, would be Mike Krzyzewski and Popovich with San Antonio. And the thing they have in common, both went to military academies. West Point, Air Force Academy for Popovich. And I think that leadership ability and that discipline has been part of their coaching. 12th Final Four, tying John Wooden of UCLA for the most ever. Four national championships. And on his way to playing for a fifth on Monday night. I want to find out, do you agree or disagree? Best of all sport? I think those two are great choices. Popovich has won what? Five titles, right? Absolutely. Five titles with San Antonio. Krzyzewski looking for his fifth. 
this year. Not only what he's done in college, think about when you transfer a look at Mike Krzyzewski's resume, what about what he's done with the Olympic right, team? Right. You talk to LeBron James and those guys, they have such respect and admiration for what he has done with them. Forbes misses the three. He's had an off shooting night. Ball still loose and now Quinn Cook will call a timeout to keep possession with a minute 52 to go. Know what a class guy Tom Izzo is. When it's all said and done, he'll tip his hat, he'll salute you, and he'll be proud of the effort that his kids did to make this moment magical yep. to get to the Final Four. Well, if you had said to him two months ago, your team's going to play in the Final Four, he'd have taken that any day of the week because they were not playing well a couple of, day, a couple of months ago. They've lost 11 times this season. They lost at home to Texas Southern back in the early part wow. of the season. They had eight overtime games this year. They won three. They lost five. And now you can see as one of the walk-ons has just taken off uh, his warm-up jersey. Keenan Wetzel's going to come into the game. He's a senior. So Tom Izzo's calling off the dogs now. I don't think we'll see any more fouling. He's going to get some guys some minutes so they can say they had a chance to play in the Final Four. I'll tell you one thing, Michigan State in great hands in football and basketball. There's the combination of D'Antonio in football and Izzo in basketball is as good as you'll find in America. It'll be Duke ball. And Wetzel has not checked into the game yet, but we may see the seniors, Trice in particular, come out before the game is over. Dawson's not in the game now. We don't know if Dawson will go back in just so he can come back out and get one more ovation from Michigan State fans as his collegiate career comes to an end. Now Duke will use some clock and Michigan State won't foul. And Cook will lay it in with a left hand. Another layup. How many layups, Dan, have we seen? One after another. Trice. Rebound Allen. And the Duke fans sensing it now. Should have sensed it about an hour yeah. ago. <laughs> Should have sensed it yeah. about an hour ago. And now some subs. Trevor Bonoff and Keenan Wetzel walk-ons will get a chance to say they played in the final four and the Duke fans are saying this is their house. Those Cambry crazies man they can get loud a lot of tears on that sideline great effort to make this happen to get to the final four for the Spartans but this moment belongs to the Dukies. So what a matter. He and Jones on that free throw line. I love guys that can make shots. I really do. You know, we hear about guys out there, they can defend, they do such and such. I want guys to make shots. Trice coming out for the last time, hugging his coach before making his way down with the rest of his teammates. A terrific college career for him. And Cook knocks them both down. He'll come out as Plumley comes back in. They beat him by 10 in November. They're leading them by 20. Here in April, and Duke is on its way to the national championship game. Semifinal number two, Kentucky and Wisconsin. That Still to come tonight. A Goliath matchup. A Goliath matchup. Wetzel misses from the corner. Plumley the rebound. Mike Krzyzewski's got his two walk-ons ready to check in if he gets an opportunity. And he'll call a timeout, but they won't take the whole 30 seconds. This will just be to sub in. And Nick Paliuka and Sean Kelly. Get that thrill. They don't have a lot of guys they can sub. They're no, not that's a very it. deep team. Eight scholarship players and two walk-ons. As a hug for Mr. Jones. An impressive performance for the Blue Devils at both ends of the floor. How that phone call on November 15 could have changed the whole complexion. Can you imagine? Put right now Okafer and Jones with the Spartans. And they were right there yep. in yep. the front and recruiting them. I really think this kid is going to be special. Allen, not right there he wasn't, but I'm telling you, he just has that on. You would have seen the game that I went to high school. He was dunking, shooting jumpers. Unbelievable against Okafor. Mm -hmm. Shot clock is turned off. Final 30 seconds. It's been all due. You got to tip the hat to them. They were brilliant today, offensively and defensively. Once you forget the first four minutes of the game. 
They have great balance, inside presence, the two diaper dandies, Winslow, and certainly Okafor was sensational on the interior. Winslow 19, Okafor 18, Cook 17, and the Duke Blue Devils are headed to the national championship game on Monday night. Great defensive effort made it happen again. Their defense has been superb in the NCAA tournament. That's respect right there. That's admiration and respect. And jubilation for Blue Devils fans. The end of the line for Michigan State after a great run to get him here to Indianapolis, but it'll be Duke advancing on to take on the winner of, I of Wisconsin and Kentucky. That'll be the second semifinal of the game that we'll have for you starting about 35 or 40 minutes from now here at Lucas Oil Stadium.